Hello, it's Joe, and I've got a spinny chair. Whee! I, ooh, ah, I got it at a second-hand store when I needed it for a project, but I'm afraid I'm going to break it if I keep doing that. Maybe I'll just break it in. Who knows? Anyways, we got another 3D printing tip for you today. Well, I say we, I mean, I've got another 3D printing tip for you, and so we together are going to have fun with Blender. Cool stuff. And this is, this is a thing that I haven't seen other programs that can do. I haven't found any other program that can do this. What we're going to do, say you download a, a, an STL and it's got a lot of parts in the one STL and you go, I don't, I need that one. How do you get that one? Well, this is how. Blender can do it. Here's how you do it. It's real simple. It's super simple. You're going to love this. Uh, you load up Blender, of course. You go file, import, STL. You navigate to where it is. Uh, you just find it on the page. Are we? Get, oh, we got my mouse cursor. That's marvelous. And you uh, import the STL that you're looking for. Okay, easy, right? So here's here's big old honking STL with a lot of parts. This is a meta chess set that I made, uh, and I've recently made a new version. I printed it out, and uh, it didn't quite work. So now I need to separate some parts uh, of my own mesh and print it out. But uh, I got the little ones, some of the little ones to print. Uh, there's a tiny. Let me move my head out of the way. Tiny little light. You can't hardly see it because my fingers are fat. But, uh, well, you know, the king. Probably you guys can see the king better. Anyways, tiny little chest set. And uh, I want to separate it. So, sorry. File, import, import to mesh. Press tab to enter edit mode. Press P to separate it. And do it by loose parts. And then give Blender a couple of minutes, depending on how many loose parts there are, to figure out where the loose parts are and break them apart and separate them. Give it another minute because my computer is recording and it's slow. And now, uh, notice the only one that's left is just one of them right here. If you press A to deselect everything, you can, you can just select them one at a time and take a look. Uh, normally, I'm covering up uh, uh, the view, but look at how many parts were made out of this. That seems like a lot of parts, actually. I wonder I wonder if some of them aren't complete. We'll find out in a minute. So what you can do is select on just one of them, right? There's my tiny little rook. Uh, here, here he is printed. Tiny, tiny little. Man, I wish that I could show it to you guys, but my fingers are just so huge. There we go. Tiny little rook. Uh, and it's a rook that you play on top of the big rook. Daddy Rook and Baby Rook, and uh, let's let's say, oh, yeah, you can tell it's separate. I can move it around. Then you select the one that you want. File, export, STL, and uh, I'm going to call this MC Rook Big, and uh, and export it. Give it a second. Maybe you gotta hit enter twice, once for the name and once for the confirmation. And uh, and there you go. You got it separated out, and it's its own separate little STL. I'll do it again. Uh, with the little rook, little, and uh, and there you go. And you just you you grab the pieces that you want, name them, export them, and there you go. Super easy. Now, what happens? I'm I'm going to just quickly run through these and see if we'll put yourself back. Uh, see if any of them are are incomplete, or if I really have. Uh, it's counting out thirty one for me. Shouldn't be more than, more than, uh, uh, no, uh, it is, it's 32, 31 plus the original. So yes, 32 because there's 16. It's, okay, so, so no, none of them are bad, but let's say that you download a mesh and after doing separate, uh, you have a situation like this. I'm going to, I'm going to really quickly create uh, a bad, a bad mesh. Why would I do that? Well, because this happens. Um, am I? Ooh, why am I doing it always at the medium point, Joe? I need to resave my user settings. I'll figure that out in a second. Okay, so there's th this is this is not a good mesh. But if I were to join these two together, so it looks like a good mesh, you might have a mesh imported like this. Uh, you can select multiple 
multiple ones and export them into same STL. And you might import them and you look at it and you go, yeah, it looks okay, all right. And so you'll enter edit mode and you'll uh, you'll hit P and select and separate by loose parts and you'll separate them all out. But then you then you select on this one, uh, deselect. You select on this one, you realize I'm not getting the whole thing. What happened here? And the problem is it's a bad and this and this will lead to bad prints. You got to fix this. Now there's there's a couple of ways to fix this. First of all, uh, sorry about that. There was some dust on my lens. Uh, first of all, you should, well, one way to do it is to take your models and run them through NetFab. NetFab likes to fix problems like this. And net, cloud.netfab.com, it's actually now netfab.azure or something, but I just go to cloud.netfab and it redirects me. It's where I've always gone. You could fix it yourself, but in order to do that, you have to know a little bit of, of Blender and you know how you have to know how to use the Boolean modifier, union it with the... Uh, with the other part oh yeah because I joined them um, and then if you apply that modifier this one is now a good solid you'll see it has no internal geometry it's good to go uh, the sphere is still there because it's it's blender one other thing that you can do though let me turn off let me back out to where there we go uh, there is a tool called the bool tool which is marvelous. I love the bool tool. Unfortunately, the bool tool's a little bit weird to get because they host it on GitHub. I don't understand why they host it on GitHub, but GitHub is hard to find the download for. But if you can get the download, and if you can drop the Python file into your add-ons directory, and then go into your user preferences and turn on uh, bool tool, which is actually, I want to do that real fast, if only to hit this button. Uh, yeah, so it's actually under object after you do that. So if you come down to object, let me turn this off and then find the bool tool and click it and turn it on. You got the bool tool. Save my user settings because I love those. Um, and right here you got the bool tool. And with the bool tool, you just select everything you want and union them together. And what it does is it takes one of them and turns it into wireframe mode. So no matter what you're doing, you can't really see it. And then it unions the other two together. Um, the gotcha with this, though, is you have to hit all to deselect them and then just select the one that you want. Because when you come out of the bool tool, you actually have them all selected. And you will only export what you select. So make sure to select before doing your file export with your STL so that you are only exporting the one that you want because you'll still have intersected geometry if you don't. That's the one gotcha with the bool tool, but the bool tool is super easy. I mean, you saw that. It's just select and zip and it's done. Here, I'll do it again. Here's how, here's how we use the bool tool. Select, union, done. I mean, done. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. I love the bool tool, but it's hard to install. Once you got it installed, though, it's super easy to use. Hey, guy who's making the bool tool, give us a download leak. It's not GitHub. GitHub's hard to find the download leak on. Oh, it's so easy. No, it's hard. Don't give me that. It's easy for me because I'm a nerd, but not everybody's a nerd. Okay, sorry. I'm, I've gone off on it. We talked about separating meshes. You guys saw how super easy that was to do. You don't even need to know how to model. It's a useful thing to know how to do, and so it's worth having Blender installed just for that. And hey, since you got Blender installed, maybe you should check out uh, a book that I got that'll teach you how to use Blender to model things. It's a good, it's a good tool to have. Uh, 3D printing blueprints. Check it out. Sorry, I got. I, I'm contractually obligated by uh, to con contracts with myself, but still to plug it a little bit with you guys. Hey, since my last video, I've had more subscribers. I want to thank uh, Donnie Lucian. Brent Wills, Todd Bott, Duplicat, and uh, Black Forest Programming. Thank you guys for joining up. I hope that you are finding uh, use in these videos, that you enjoy them. Uh, I hope that these videos are helping people learn to do more awesome things. I hope that it helped you learn something. And uh, thank you guys. You are the wind beneath my wind uh, wings. Uh, but you are. You are. You're totally the reason why I do this. So thank you guys. And uh, if you have a question, a comment, something that you want me to cover in a future video, some clarification you want on this or a past video, don't be quiet. Leave a comment.
you can leave a comment here on my blog. My blog the address is down there. And come check out my blog because I'm doing really cool stuff. I've got adventures going on. I'd like to see you guys uh, participate in them. Again, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. And see you next time. <laughs>